Sibling rivalry. Sibling rivalry did not start today. The Bible recorded that there was sibling rivalry. We have cases like Canaan, Abel, Esau and Jacob, and the famous popular story, Joseph and his brothers. We all know how it ended for Joseph. Joseph was sold into slavery by his own blood brothers. Why? Because they felt that he was most loved by their father. And the only way to get away with him was to sell him into slavery. It was the animosity that they had towards him that made them conceive that thought. The anger, the hatred, the jealousy, the envy, call it whatever you know, it was what made them sell Joseph into slavery. Guys, welcome to another beautiful day. This is Obinje. If you're just seeing me for the first time, how are you all doing? Like I always say, good morning, afternoon, evening, depending what time of the day you might be watching this. Welcome to Obinje O Talk, where we talk about everything love, life, marriage, family, business, finance, and what you can imagine. Today, I want us to talk about sibling rivalry. Sibling rivalry is happening everywhere now if you are in good terms with your siblings your brothers your sisters if that family of yours is still existing under the very foundation that it was formed and i must tell you guys congratulations keep up the good work whatever it is that you guys are doing to keep your family intact even if you are married and you have started your own family congratulations keep at it because like I said, sibling rivalry had been, you know, in the times of our four forefathers. So it happening now is not a, a surprise. But what you do to keep you and your siblings going, keep at it. So we're going to talk about sibling rivalry. What exactly is the root cause of sibling rivalry? What exactly can we do to at least minimize the misunderstandings, the quarrels, because this, you know, should I call it fight or quarrels or whatever they are, as a result of misunderstandings that happen right from home. So guys, before we go deep into the channel, please subscribe to this channel. Try, please, please, please get me to 1,000 subscribers. Please go watch my other videos so that my watch hours can also, you know, climb the ladder. Engage with every video that you watch so that the algorithm knows that this is a good video and it does push it out to other people. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So everything I'm going to say here is based off my own understanding and you know, what I have seen happen in families. So please <laughs> make do with my disclaimer. I'm not saying it on any authority. I'm just saying it based off what I have witnessed and um, Yes, sibling rivalry is happening in my own family. I have siblings that are not talking with each other. So I'm not going to come and sit down here and pretend that my own family is the best or we, we have it figured out. We don't have it figured out. So I'm going to be using the experience from my own family and the ones that I have heard and witnessed outside to be telling you who or what party I think is the root cause of family sibling rivalry. I know some of you might not agree with me, but like I said, this is my own personal opinion. Majority of the times, the root cause of sibling rivalry are our parents. <laughs> yes, they are our parents because they should know better than us, but because they are human, so they make mistakes too. They are the ones that bring about this sibling rivalry knowingly or unknowingly or just not being able to you know comport themselves now how do they do these things favoritism gossiping you know putting down a child and elevating another child like i said these things can be done unknowingly or knowingly but the truth is that whether you do it unknowingly or you do it knowingly somebody somewhere that is one of your children if not all of your children are going to be reacting to what you give to them so let's talk about favoritism every parent out here has that one child that they are endeared towards 
every parent has that child that has a you know characteristic or has a skill or there's just something about that child that endears that parents to that child unfortunately we are liars to ourselves <laughs> we parents we are liars why do i say we are liars most times when i come across posts where they ask parents do you have a favorite child majority of the commenters there deny having a favorite child they all say that oh i love all my children equally this is me telling you you cannot love all your children equally you cannot it's not possible now let us reference back to the bible you can see that joseph's father loved joseph if i must say much more than the other kids and that's because there was something different about Joseph. So amongst your children, there is one that we appeal to daddy, there is one that we appeal to mommy, based off maybe their educational prowess. It could be that they have one skill, it could be that they are very, you know, respectful, whatever it is. So there's always one child that will endear to you. So when you tell yourself that you love all your kids equally, you are lying to yourself. What is happening is that you are trying your best, yes, to love your children equally. But because it is not just possible, you end up overdoing it. And when you overdo something, you have not done anything at all. So most times when you have that child that is your favorite, you tend to, you know, favor that child more than other children. Your love or whatever it is that is blinding you towards that child blinds you. So that most times you never get to see the wrong in that child's behavior. Now that child can have a misunderstanding with his or her siblings and you will be blinded towards the wrong of the child every time scolding the other ones. And you know what happens, those other children are going to be perceiving it that mommy doesn't love me, daddy doesn't love me. I've been in a family at one point in time where there was a misunderstanding between the children and a child told the parent that you don't love me. Anytime there's a misunderstanding between me and my sibling, you don't always sit down to hear what happened. And even if you do listen, your mind is made up who is right and who is wrong. And when I sat there and saw that play that, it took me back home to when I was growing up. Now, obviously, I wasn't my parents their favorite. Did I say my parents had a favorite? Yes, until till date, even though my parents are late, I keep saying that my parents had their favorite and I didn't come close. So what happened is that I am the fifth child out of six children. I had my elder sister, sorry, unfortunately my elder sister, this particular one I'm going to be talking about right now, she's late. She was older than me with two years and I want to believe between her and me, my father loved her more than me. So that most times when we had little misunderstanding, my father would tell me that I am the junior, so as far as his concern, I was the one that was wrong. I should have no anything she does, she's right. And if I could not take what she was doing, then I should come and report to him. So on that ground, if there was to be any kind of punishment, I was the one receiving it. If there was any type of beating, I was the one receiving it because I am the junior. So in cases like that, what happens is that I could have grown up not loving my elder sister because she is that thing that made my parents not to love me. But thank God for my kind of person. I think I grew up and understood that I am responsible for how I feel based off how somebody, you know, treats me. And I grew up to know that if my sister was my father's favorite, she did not have to get the, you know, that anger or resentment for me. My father made his choice and unfortunately I was not the choice he made. So she was not going to, you know, be the one to suffer. So that is how favoritism plays out. If you are not fortunate to have kids that can understand that this is this, they might end up resenting each other. And unfortunately, they will take it with them into the future. And most times, daddy and mommy will not be in the future with them when the anger, the hatred, the jealousy would have you know, overblown itself 
and these children no longer relate as siblings. Now let's talk about gossiping. <laughs> you see this little gossip that we... At that point in time, you're thinking it's a little gossip, but you are building that habit in that child. Like I said again, most times as parents, we have that one favorite child. Before you know what, you start to gossip about another child with that child. And you are already making that child you're gossiping with feel that she doesn't do wrong. She's better. She's the one that no excuse me. She's the one that sits down and notices every other person's bad behavior. She's without bad behavior. Before you know what, her shoulder pad is like this, she's better off. Then this competition. I'm better than you. This, that. I'm the one that mommy was always confiding in. Gossip. You know everybody's wrongs, you know everybody's ills. You begin to look at them as that's your own brother, that's your own sister. Then we have the one that you are always pulling the child down. The child needs to never do well. Can't you see your brother is doing well in his academics? Can't you see your sister? She's doing well in her academics. Or can't you see your sister has gotten married? You are here to get married. These little, little, little things that we say unconsciously or consciously, whether we mean them or we don't mean them, it makes siblings to start fighting, to start seeing each other in a different light. You now see that that your brother, that your sister becomes your enemy. These are little blocks that are being laid in our mind. That hatred habit begins to grow, grow, grow. And before you know what, like I said, your brother, your sister becomes the enemy that they are not supposed to be. And when you grow up seeing your brother, your sister as your enemy, as your foe, you are going to, you know, carry them like that into the future. At the time you were living together under your father's roof, the anger, the hatred, the jealousy, the envy, it could have been managed or it was managed. But by the time you become a man and a woman of your own, you will see that I don't need them in my life. You start hearing that a friend is better than a sister. A friend is better than a brother. You begin to, you know, confide with the outsider. You begin to say you don't want drama. You don't want the drama that is coming from your brother. You don't want the drama that is coming from your sister. And what is even most annoying is that by the time you get married, because there's already that deep-rooted anger, resentment, whatever, your wife, your children begin to look at your siblings as the enemy that is worrying them. I've had cases whereby they will go somewhere and they will say, it is your brother, it is your sister that is doing you. I've read stories where a family loses a child. Now, I'm not trying to downplay anybody's story. But what I'm trying to say is that most times, sibling rivalry is the root cause of all of the things that you hear. You go somewhere, they tell you that it's your brother, it's your sister that is trying to kill your child. It is your brother or your sister that is the root cause of your poverty. Why? I'm not saying that our parents are the only cause of sibling rivalry, but most times when you check it, it comes from our parents, from the way they handled our growing up, our existence on their, under their roof. So when we grow, we are what we know, we are what we lived. That anger, that fight, that misunderstanding that was not you know, attended to carefully, from that little spark becomes a fire. Then in future, we no longer relate with each other. People try to intervene to bring you people back to what you used to be. You tell everybody, mind your business. Mind your business. My brother, I can never relate with him. My sister, I cannot relate with her anymore. I There's a post recently that, that has been trending about uh, a family that one day, uh, I think they, sh they sold their father's property for 60 million and they said their mother, who is in her 70s, 
said she was going to be taking 30 million out of the money and leaving the 30 million for the i think there are seven kids they said their first son was going to take the majority share then if three other boys were going to take was it 10 10 10 million then the three other girls were going to be taking three three million if we were to analyze that story you will see already there's some kind of bitterness amongst themselves number one the mother says she's taking 30 million yes it is her husband's money but at 70 what are you doing with 30 million now let's scrap the mother side of the story away and follow how they said they were going to share the money they said their mother would take five million the senior would take the most then the remaining three boys will take 10 10 million then the girls will take three three million is it not because they they they, they don't value the girls they they don't like them that much that is why they can say three three million naira each but the other boys take 10 10 million can you see the the gap in the 10 million and the three million it tells you already that that family has some kind of foundational problems and this is what we are seeing in the society today sibling rivalry like i said if you and your siblings as a married person are still keeping in touch today your kids relate with each other whatever it is that you are doing keep it up do not let any seed of discord come and scatter you what i understand is that most siblings that are able to you know continue that relationship that they have what i understand is that they have imbibed the spirit of forgiveness they have imbibed the spirit of let us learn to ignore each other's bad sides they have imbibed that spirit of come what me this unity cannot be broken it's like a broom together a broom can sweep but if you take just a broomstick out it does nothing so they see that there's strength in their unity i'm going to end this video or rather this conversation saying that we are parents now it's not going to be easy because sibling rivalry is a human thing. Sorry, not sibling rivalry. Misunderstanding is a normal thing. But as parents, we should try to, you know, manage disputes amongst our kids. And yes, even when it comes to loving our kids, there's going to be just one child or two that you are going to, or as the case might be, there are going to be some that you will love more than others please try and you know manage that love or should i use the word balance that love so that other kids don't feel left out other kids kids don't get to feel that mommy doesn't like me daddy doesn't like me and then they say i'm going to live my life as i want or i'm going to brace up for the future because i know i'm alone so please parents let's try and balance and manage love that we have for our kids and if you're the type that is to gossip with your children about other kids stop it stop it if your mouth is itching you to talk get a camera like me and talk into the camera but try not to talk about your kids negative things about your kids with others don't don't go and sell your kids to the outsider that outsider you are talking about your kid to does she tell you or does he tell you the bad things about your kids no they don't if you are the one that doesn't see anything good in any of your child or you don't see anything good in a particular child sweetheart sit down and focus you are going to see something because every one of us was gifted something perhaps you are not looking at it because you don't want to even accept whatever gift it is that child has or whatever talent or skill it is that that child has you are not wanting to see it that is why you don't see it or you just want that child to be like you so you refuse to understand that that child is different and you begin to you know segregate that child you are building the demon in that child that is going to be a bone in your truth and be a bone in your family. Sibling rivalry. Sibling rivalry. We can do better as parents. And as siblings, even if our parents are the ones that made that mistake, then we ourselves should be able to correct the mistakes of our parents and tell ourselves that, yes, mommy loved this one, daddy loved this one, 
but we are not going to allow our parents, you know, perception affect how we relate with each other. So guys, thank you. I'd love to, you know, hear what you think about sibling rivalry. I'd love to hear. If you have true life stories, then you can send it to me on hannahotc43 at gmail.com. I'm going to scroll it and I'll leave it in the description box. If there's a story that you'd want me to share with my audience out here, send it to me and I'll read it and we can see how we can do better. So guys, please thank you if you watched this video up until this length. You are yet to be subscribed or you are yet to subscribe please subscribe to the channel give this video a thumbs up and um, please share this video i'll see you guys another beautiful day bye, bye.